with data science and why for, for my particular problem for lateral movement detection, it's okay in my terms. Then I'm going to talk about lateral movement. I'm going to explain to you what is it. You don't need any background in cybersecurity. I'm going to talk about the challenges um, of detecting this specific problem. I'm going to go over some previous work. Um, then I'm going to go in a very, very high level about our algorithm, about LATMA, um, a little bit about the results, and if I have time, about some future work. Um, and we implemented LATMA uh, as a free tool. Um, we, we presented it uh, um, in Blackhead. I saw someone here that also was in Blackhead, so it was very, very nice. Um, okay, let, let's just begin. Um, so let's talk about data science and cybersecurity. Um, in order to solve any problem with data science, you must follow some stages. Uh, first, first, you need to collect data, data gathering, and um, in cybersecurity, it, it's usually very, very difficult because I don't know how many of you heard, um, uh, there, were a lot, there were a lot of uh, uh, cyber breaches, uh, uh, data theft uh, in the last two years, even here in Israel. And organizations don't usually want to share their data because it increases the chances that someone will steal it. So it's really, really hard to obtain data for cybersecurity problems. Even if you got data, you need to put it somewhere and, and before you analyze it. And most of the time, you get the, the, uh, the data is unstructured. Um, uh, for example, if you, you can look about uh, processes in your computers, uh, files, network traffic, and usually you want to look at all of them together in order to, to solve your problem. So dealing with uh, unstructured data is not impossible, but it makes your life a bit difficult. Then you need to explore the data. And usually in cybersecurity problems, um, we will look for rare events. Uh, for uh, if for our problem, for example, we're looking for specific breach that occurred. Uh, what are the chances that if I collect random data, I'm going to face this breach? Um, so I'm going, going to talk maybe a little bit about how we deal with those kinds of problems. Um, then after I explore the data, uh, I need to, to build a model, a classifier or, or, or something that's give me uh, the output I want. And in cybersecurity, we don't have that many what we call out of the box models. I cannot just apply LSTM on, on, on text and, and get something. Uh, I don't have any networks. The data is usually uh, not really nice and easy to work with and it, it changes from uh, problem to problem. So it is quite difficult. And the last step is I need to validate a model I built on data and cybersecurity problems are uh, very influenced by trends. So if, for example, now I, I build a model and I validate it on my data, in two years it might be not relevant because hackers now don't really use lateral movement, but they use something else. Or uh, a new product came into the market and it changes how organization looks. Uh, yeah, so it's really, really hard. Um, but I, I have really good conditions to work on my problem because um, where I work, Silverfort, uh, we collected data for four years and put a lot of uh, thought and effort on uh, putting in the right warehouse and, and label it and tag it. And therefore, mo most of those problems I don't have. <laughs> I have really good conditions for, the, for, for solving my problem. And now let's talk about lateral movement. Let's, okay. So what is lateral movement? Lateral movement is where attackers got somehow to the organization. It can be, for example, by sending a, a phishing email and, and by that getting the, the initial access to the organization. And then they move, they advance from computer to computer until they, uh, let's call it, fulfill their objectives. Their, their objectives might be, for example, uh, encrypting the entire organization, all the computers, uh, maybe leak some information out, can be many things, but 
Uh, the thing that's are important to remember about lateral movement is that uh, the attacker, the hacker, is advancing from computer to computer. I don't care about how, how they got uh, the access to that organization, and I don't care what, their, what is their uh, objective. So let's talk about how hackers or attackers move in, in the organization. So in every organization, you have something that's called identity provider. Uh, Microsoft technology is called Active Directory, but it's not necessarily it. It can be a lot of stuff. And in order to uh, log in to your computer or to move to, uh, to another computer, you need to provide credentials to this Active Directory or identity provider. Um, credentials might be password, might be a fingerprint, image. Um, and if you're validated, if the Active Directory says that you're validated, you can uh, advance to the computer you wanted to reach. And if you're an attacker, you can also infect them with a malware, for example. And I think identifying or detecting lateral movement is hard because attackers move exactly like normal users. So if I log into my computer, and if attacker tries to log into my computer, it's going to look exactly the same. Um, the logs on the background are going to be the same. Um, I'm not going to see. I used to work in some kind of stuff and cyber was totally different. Yeah, so the cyber world is really, really huge. Uh, and I'm, I'm talking about identity stuff and, and, and in general, all the world of identity is a bit more complicated because you, you, attackers don't leave any tracks. When I log in or, or another people, if, if you stole my, my password and you log into my computer, I won't see the difference. I'm um, sure because you have to do regular stuff to your, your, the way you do things, the way you the file to pick, the folders and stuff like that, and you have the frequency and stuff like that. And, and, if, and, okay. so, and, and, and if you don't know when you're a attacker and you, in, 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 you're entering my account, mm -hmm. you, you the distribution of, the, of your actions would be very different than mine. So, uh, yeah. 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 yeah, and thank you for, for uh, asking this question because uh, my point is that the lateral movement detection problem can be solved only with uh, machine learning or, or anomaly detection. I want to try to understand whether uh, this characteristic of behavior is mine or someone else. Uh, and the nice thing is that uh, lateral movement is advancing between older computers in the organization. So it's not just logging to my computer. I need to learn how the entire system behaves. Okay, so before I go and tell you about LATMA, uh, I want to tell you a little bit about a previous work uh, of researchers from uh, Berkeley and Dropbox. That's, uh, they did it uh, a year and a half ago. They called their algorithm Hopper. And Hopper is aimed for um, security teams, SOC teams, if you know what it is, uh, with what we call limited budget. Um, so security, uh, I don't know, security analysts frequently look at, at alerts um, that they got from, uh, from the system. And if they got 1,000 alerts per day, they, they won't be able to do anything with that. So they have some kind of budget or limit for the number of alerts they can see. And Hopper get this uh, uh, budget as a parameter. And what the algorithm does, it finds somehow, in very, uh, like, uh, in general, anomalous authentication, like, like you said, and put them on a graph. Uh, how it does it? So if um, I'm going to authenticate from computer A to computer B, A and B are, are going to be nodes in the graph and the authentication between those nodes are, are it's going to be it's going to be the edge. After I'm building this this graph, um, I'm going to look for suspicious uh, uh, passes and and score them, and then I'm going to alert only on the passes with the uh, uh, the higher scores. Quite simple. Let's see how it works. Uh, by the way, this uh, this image you're going to see is from their paper, paper not not mine. So the first component is called scenario matcher, and it takes uh, it, it kind of does the learning. 
it takes some domain context, like what is the roles of the computers? Are there uh, workstations, servers, proxies, whatever? Um, and some historic logins, um, like patterns of, of, of logins, uh, with which servers I, I frequently authenticate, etc. Put them on a graph and then uh, uh, look for passes. Then there are three uh, type of passes this algorithm looks, uh, looks for. First one is called benign passes. And if it's benign, it is not interesting. It's not dangerous. Uh, and therefore, uh, um, the algorithm won't throw any alert. Second one is called a uh, clear credential switch. And it means that uh, there are three computers, A, B, and C. I moved from computer A to computer B, and it was suspicious. On computer B, uh, I probably stole credentials of someone else. And then I see suspicious authentications between computer B and computer C. The third scenario is unclear. I have three computers and I see two anomalous authentications uh, with the same credentials, which means I authenticated from A to B and then from B to C. And uh, the last phase of this algorithm is throwing the alert. So we don't throw any alert on uh, benign passes. If I have a clear credential switch, it means that someone stole credentials and therefore I am going to throw alert always. And in the unclear casualty, I'm going to give scores uh, uh, to the passes and then just alert on the highest score according to my uh, alert budget. Was it kind of clear? This is not my work. This is previous work. In a very high level. This is a very big material. Yeah. Cool. So let's talk a bit about the results of Hopper. So it was tested uh, on about billion authentications, a little bit less, uh, from 15 months of, of, of Dropbox enterprise data with some of simulated lateral movement attacks. And it detects 95% uh, of the attacks with average false positive rate of nine per day, which is quite good to this time. This was kind of the state of the art algorithm till this day. However, there are some still lies and, and problems with this algorithm. Uh, first, simulated attacks are nothing like real attacks. Um, not only for lateral movement, by the way. Any lateral movement breach and any cybersecurity breach uh, is, I don't know, it's better to sample real attack than uh, simulated because it always differs. As I said before, there are some trends. But there is a lot less real attacks than simulated. Yeah, that's true. Um, and usually, the attacks today are very different than we attacks yesterday. That's true. Um, but I, rem I remind you that I have data for of four years. So I'm kind of covered from this perspective. No, so the logs are, are the same, but from different time and different organizations. Hmm? Authentication logs, yeah. Um, another, th another problematic stuff that's going on here, um, it was trained only on one organization, on Dropbox organization, and different organization, uh, they have uh, different characteristics. So if I'm a, a bank or hospital or uh, cyber insurance or Blumberg, I'm going to have different organizations, different size, different, I don't know, different number of computers <laughs> with, with different roles, and therefore, Learning on specific organization is not going to yield good results for other types of organizations. Um, all this stuff with the alert budget is kind of a lie. I lied to you before when I said you, we have nine false positive per day because I didn't tell you what is the alert budget. Alert budget naturally limits the number of, of alerts you get. And therefore, if I cannot throw a lot of alerts, I won't have that many false positives per day. So this is a lie that uh, our algorithm get, gets rid of. And the last thing that is quite problematic, problematic with this uh, uh, algorithm is that it looks only for advancing, some, uh, for movement. But lateral movement actually has some other really interesting patterns that are not taking into consideration 
with this algorithm. And I'm going to show you uh, how we do it later. I have a question. You told us calling and deciding when to set an alert and when not to wait for the budget. Yeah. Is it real time or is it like <coughs> It's a great question. Uh, I'm going to answer that in four slides. Um, he asked if the uh, algorithm works in real time or not, and I'm going to to answer that in, in four slides, approximately. Is the process constantly changing? When the users uh, uh, arrive to the company, or if you are assigned to a new project, then you need to access new servers, so you cannot uh, completely rely on past uh, yeah, that's true. Um, so the question was, uh, I'll, I'll make it short. Uh, if I take a long period of, of data, some trends might change over the time and I cannot rely on all data. And it's true, the algorithm learns all the time. Um, and when I'll get to my algorithm, it will be much clearer why uh, we are uh, immune for those kinds of, of uh, uh, I don't know, of stuff. I have more questions before I go to Latma. <laughs> it's like a tree. You go from each branch as from the mutants, right? Just left. Yeah. Um, and this network, and, and, and the attacker wants to go to every one of them. Mm -hmm. So it seems to me, and I know, especially if I'm it would be really obvious that it's very different from. I mean, if I'm as a developer logging into Visualizing directly, and then I want to go to my spa cluster. Then I'll stay in this cluster of four months. I will work on it for a couple of hours. But if someone else is using the service, I mean, you may go for one to do the and then we we'll stay on it. But he has to like run. Yeah. Like, he to run like, like from down there, create and go back to the main Twitter, go to another branch. Yeah. It seems like something that is, is very different from the. I'm like following on the question that he said. Yeah, so. Um, or maybe I don't understand. No, no, I think you understand. Um, maybe uh, all the questions about uh, how LATMA works, there is a, a really good slide in, in a couple of slides. It's, it's explains really well. And I think it explains exactly this point. Um, so I think that we should wait with those questions. Uh, good question to answer. <laughs> slide here. Yeah. An okay question with three slides. Uh, now it's also a good question. <laughs> okay, so let, let's proceed. Um, so let's talk about LATMA and about the research we made. Um, so like every good research, the first thing we did is implement Hopper. Um, and we removed the alert budget. We looked on all the alerts uh, on over all our data and, and try to understand the characteristic, when, wh what are the scores, um, uh, how frequent it things are, are alerted and, and stuff like this. Um, uh, yeah, so I'll say it now, some of our data contain real life lateral movement attacks. Um, and since we collected data for uh, of four years, uh, we have uh, not hundreds, but we have we have a lot. We have a lot and, and a lot of them are confirmed with customers. So. It is really good and justified and, and we, we could work with it. So we kind of apply the following changes uh, to Hopper. So first we had that the first phase uh, uh, where we decided which edges or authentications are including in the graph and which are not. So we tuned a little bit this scenario measure according to what we saw. We had another filter layer uh, that looks for specific events, lateral movement events, and not only advancing from computer to computer. Uh, and we changed the uh, way we manage alerts. All the alert system is changed. Let's see comparison between the two algorithms. So we had a scenario measure at the beginning, and LATMA also has scenario measure. We call it enhanced scenario measure because we made some changes and tuning parameters according to data we see on many organizations. Then next phase is kind of the same. Uh, don't be angry with me, I was kind of lazy. So I didn't draw something from scratch. We don't exactly look for sequences or passes here, but it's close enough, but we removed the alert budget. Um, then we have the, our new phase that's called the event matcher. We're looking for additional 
events of lateral movement uh, that might point out that we are looking at lateral movement. And finally, we have, after we see a new event, we can decide either to throw alert, not throwing alert, or merging the current event to existing uh, alert. It's going to be very, very clear in a few slides. <laughs> okay, so let's deep dive a bit to each of those components. So let's talk about the enhanced scenario matcher, which is kind of similar to what Hopper has. Um, so a few examples for what we do here. Uh, we filter out some automation logins. So if, for example, I log into a specific server exactly every one hour, it means that probably I'm running a script and it's probably not an attacker and I can filter it out from my graph. Next, what I'm trying to do is to associate between um, users and the computers they own. So if I know that I'm Gal on this computer, it means that every authentication I'm doing from this computer is very likely to be legitimate. Another, th another thing we do is we are looking for what we call sinks and hubs. Sinks are computers that a lot of different users authenticate with, and hubs are the opposites, are, are machines that a lot of different users authenticate from, like VPNs or proxies or whatever. And the reason we filter them out is because they cause a lot of noise in the algorithm. Uh, even if lateral movement involves them in somehow, we will probably detect them somewhere else during this process. Cool. Now let's talk about the event matcher. So as I said before, the event matcher, um, we are looking for additional patterns or event that might point out that uh, we are looking at lateral movement. Uh, if I had more time, um, I would go with you over a real lateral movement and we would understand those uh, kind of events together, but I don't have that much time. So I'm just going to spoiler you what kind of events we have. <coughs> Am I? Okay. So we have three types of events. We have a searching event. Um, and what we saw is that it, a lot of time attackers don't know the organization. They got to a computer and now they need to know, uh, they need to look for a new home or a new computer to advance to. So they're trying to understand uh, what's going on. We have the actual advancing when the, uh, when the user advanced from computer A to computer B. And we have the acting where the uh, attacker fulfilling their objective. Uh, they can encrypt the entire en environment in this case, or leaking the information out. Uh, it can be... Can you repeat the didn't on the last one, the act? Acting is when the, uh, the attacker fulfilling their objective. For example, that they can encrypt your entire organization, the, com the, the computers of, of the organization. Hmm? When the acting is detected, it's too late. It's too late, it's true. Um, but it's really easy to detect the, the act. True. If you want to block lateral movement in real time, the acting is not very good. If you want to detect it, even one day later, it is still good. And I agree, the searching is, is I think, the, the most important pattern or, or event that wasn't considered into, uh, into Hopper. Um, so let's just go over, those are the type of the events. I'm not going to go over all the real events, but um, here are a few examples for, so we have a, a, a searching event that's called white cane, and this is where uh, the attacker manually tries to uh, find new computer to advance to. They, they do it usually manually because they don't want to be revealed at this point, uh, because it is, this is usually happens in the beginning of lateral movement attacks. We saw a lot of those. Um, we have an event that we call it a uh, bridge, and this is actually exactly like Hopper. We have three computers, A, B, and C. Uh, we have suspicious authentications between A and B, and then another suspicious authentication between B and C with the same credentials. We have switch bridge, which is the same, but uh, uh, there was a credential theft uh, at computer B, and usually the, the new credentials that were set uh, are stronger one. They have more permissions than, than the original user. Another interesting uh, things or event we saw 
which is actually uh, a combination of two white canes. Uh, we call it the weight chief. And this is where uh, the attacker is looking for a new home. Uh, they find one and then they're looking again. Uh, so they shift their weight from the original computer to the one they found and now they're performing um, a white can again. And the last one is blast. And in blast, uh, not like white cane, the uh, attacker, they don't care to be revealed. They just going and, and accessing a lot of different machines in the organizations in a very, very short time, usually uh, in order to steal information or to encrypt the, the, the computers. Um, yeah, have a question? I have a question. Uh, once, once an attacker is trying to connect to any computer, you're not logging it. You cannot know when it is, it is done. Only after you can connect to one of the computers, only then you have the event of connecting. No, it's not true. Uh, when, when there is attempt of, of connecting to, to a computer, I also see it. I mean, I, I, I didn't, uh, deep, like, I didn't cover all the details of the algorithm, but I see not only successful authentications, but also failed attempts. But you said that you filter out the hub attacks. So if it is from a hub, someone that you don't know. Yeah, but hub, in hub, I'm not filtering out. When I'm looking for hub, I'm not filtering out anomalous authentication. The hub is where you have a lot of legitimate authentications from a machine, and Blast is where you have an, a lot of suspicious authentications from a machine. It's not, it's not the same. It's similar, but not the same. Okay, last question, because I don't think we have time. So once he tries, when does he query the, the Active Directory? Because actually, when he queries the Active Directory is when you know that there is a, an attack. Okay, um, so the question uh, was when I query the Active Directory. So there are two, two answers for this question. Um, Silverford solution, uh, we have like a pattern and, and we see all the traffic to the Active Directory all the time. We don't need to query. Uh, this is what Silverford is based on. And we have a free tool not related to Silverford uh, that uh, has a model that collects all the data and offline tries to understand if you have lateral movement attack on your environment from the last couple of days. But if you want the real-time solution, and I answer your um, someone else's question here as well, um, if you want a real-time solution, you need Silverport. I, I don't want to be, uh, it's not a Mercatel uh, presentation. <laughs> um, another question? Yeah. Uh, when you say free tool, uh, is it open source? Uh, some of it, I'm going to, the last slide is on it. Uh, Cool. So now let's zoom out for the event matcher and let's talk about the alerts. So basically I'm throwing a new alert when I see two events that are connecting their, that are connected with uh, the same computer together. So if I have a, a, a bridge, like a movement from A to B to C, and then on C, I'm seeing a white cane. Those two events are connected together. So I'll, I'll throw a new alert. And if I see a new event that is connected to existing alert, I'm just going to, um, to match them together, to connect them. So now let's just go over all the algorithm together. So I have my organization. First off, I need to collect data. So all the edges here represent authentication. Then I filter out authentication that are not relevant, that are not anomalous. Then I'm looking for events. So you can see that I have here a bridge and here a bridge and here I have a white cane. And finally, I'm connecting the events together like here. Let's talk about the results. This is the thing, the interesting part. So we tested it on more than 30 different environments. Actually, it's even more. Uh, with also almost a billion authentications. Um, with a couple of real lateral movement attacks. Uh, we detected also about 95% of them from the ones that we are aware of. Of course, there, there might be another lateral movement in, in our data that we're not aware of, uh, but um, we detected absolutely the, the most of them. 
And we got a false positive rate, uh, like one in three days and not nine per day, which is almost 30 times better than Hopper. And we don't have any alert budget here. Um, and as you said before, the algorithm can implement it online or offline. Online is where the authentication comes uh, in stream one by one, and we can detect the events uh, online, we can throw alerts online, we can decide whether they go into the graph or not online. Uh, by the way, it also holds for Hopper, for both algorithms. Um, now let's talk about the tool. Uh, so we, we developed an open source tool that contains uh, two modules. Uh, one which is really open source that collect the authentication traffic from your organization. And one which is free, but it's not open, open source that uh, runs the LATMA logic. Um, and what the tool yields is a report with all the uh, uh, lateral movement attacks when they occurred by whom in the organization and uh, a GIF file that represent the lateral movement. And here you can see, for example, that those green circles are white canes and here you don't see it, but there is a blast. <laughs> um, I think those, those results are really, really important because when you work in, in a security team, in a, if you're a security analyst, you see a lot of alerts every day and one of your challenges is convincing your boss that what you're seeing now is real. And we provide the evidence and not only say this is lateral movement. We, we say, we kind of say why. Um, so you're welcome to try it yourself. So the data collection is open source. Um, if you want to play, to run uh, uh, LATMA, you can take the data you collected and run LATMA. And if you're looking for a job, I'm, I'm specifically <laughs> recruiting a, a security expert to, to my team. And there are a lot of other open positions in Silverfort. Uh, yeah, and now you can ask questions. <laughs> Yes. Uh, have you been able to uh, fingerprint specific attackers and give some attribution to attackers? Yeah, so the question was uh, if we were able to figure out, like to characterize specific uh, attackers. And the answer is kind of. We saw some trends. So the, the weight shift I, I mentioned before, I decided to put it here because we saw it a, a couple of times. And if you think about it, it's it's just two white canes connected by each other. We should, the algorithm should alert on it anyway. Uh, but it was too interesting not to present it. Uh, uh, out of the lateral movements that you were able to recognize, how, were, how many were actual attacks? And, and how many were like a developer that did something unusual? And how, how can you... Yes, so it's really hard to tell because each one of them, we had a couple that were, uh, we verified with the customers and they were real. Uh, not all the customers are very, very friendly. So it's in some cases we just guessed. Um, but I can say, and it, again, it's not market ill, but now we're opening a, a threat hunting team in Silverford because it works. <laughs> I mean. We 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 look we're seeing a lot, really a lot of lateral movements and other stuff. Um, yeah, so a lot of them are real. I'm not sure that all of them. Yeah, if, if an attacker or a group of attackers they operates very very slowly, so they impersonate what the other guy over there said. They, they impersonate the normal kind of movement over many many days or months, and they gradually gradually obtain authentication data. Uh, for the system, so you will obviously see the patterns, but you will uh, uh, mislabel them as normal movements, and then when they finally decide to uh, carry out uh, the real attack, then they have already the, the whole network mapped, and various computers already uh, put their authentication data. So within perhaps one day, they can uh, 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 all the from the search position to the act position, which someone already said is too late. Yeah, so you're right. Um, I'll just repeat a question. Uh, uh, you ask what about uh, if attacker are um, 
attacking slowly the, the environment if they're getting access to the environment and then wait a few weeks or so and then move on to the next uh, to the next computer and, and so on. And the answer is that, yeah, we will miss the attack, but certainly most of the attacks are done by kids. <laughs> they're very, we saw usually very high, like very, I don't know, the, the, I think the average duration of lateral movement is about a, a couple of days max. Um, I don't know how many of you heard, but I think a year and a half or two years ago, there were uh, the sunburst attack, which was huge and it was sophisticated. And, and yeah, we might miss attacks like this. I mean, uh, this is kind of the future work that we need to, to do with the algorithm. Um, yeah, you're, you're right. Also, um, it's going to factor in slowly. And it's not on the federal movement tech yet. We have uh, different risk indicators that's supposed to detect anomalous behavior that is different from federal movements. So we might uh, detect them even before the actual federal movement. Yeah, well, this is Shai and Samir, they're uh, in my team. <laughs> Uh, and they work also on this algorithm. Uh, yeah, so we have other techniques to stop attacks that are not related just to this algorithm. So uh, we kind of, we cover a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, more questions. Is it that if the approach is, is it the unsupervised learning, like some kind of anomaly detection using graphs of data? Or, I mean, or is it supervised? Because you have very small data and a small number of labels. Yes. Yeah, so. the, the question was, uh, is it supervised or not supervised learning? So it kind of both. Uh, we, we, it's true that we don't have many labeled attacks, but we started with what we have. And then we kind of discovered more attacks and we went and asked customers, um, is it a real attack? And, and they told us, oh, yeah, or it's a it, it usually was a real attack or a pen testing, which is simulation of attack, but it's kind of, kind of real attack for our purposes. Uh, for those of you who don't know, pen testing is simulation of real attacks in the environment. I know I said it's cheating, but when I, I detect it and I don't, didn't know it's, it's there, I'm, I'm okay with it. I mean, the. How are you doing the pen testing? Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't do pen testing. The, the customers do pen testing and they don't tell me about it, usually. All right. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you.